Hi, this is Pastor Coy Sampson with the Mace Road Church. Welcome to Psalms 365.1, where we will be praying through the book of Psalms one day at a time, asking God to shape our lives to the truth of Scripture in Christ Jesus, devoting ourselves to the heart of God as revealed to the psalmist by Holy Spirit, and praying the Holy Scriptures back to our Father in Heaven. Hello, welcome to day 111 of Psalm 365.1. And today we're looking at a psalm in Genesis chapter 18, um, a very short prayer by Abraham to God in verse 27. Now this prayer is part of a longer prayer where God, Abraham is interceding to God for Sodom and Gomorrah. And we're going to focus on one verse of this prayer. But what happens is God says, should we keep from Abraham what we're planning to do to Sodom and Gomorrah? Or God was going to judge Sodom and Gomorrah for their immorality, for their sin, and destroy the cities. So he comes to Abraham and he tells him, um, because the outcry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grave, I will go down to see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry that has come to me. And if not, I will know. Then the men turned away from there and went toward Sodom and Gomorrah. Still the Lord <clears throat> still stood, but Abraham still stood before the Lord. And Abraham came near and said, Would you destroy the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are fifty righteous within the city. Would you also destroy the place and not spare it for the fifty righteous that were in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing as this, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous should be as the wicked. Far be it from you. Shall the, not the judge of all the earth do what is right? And so he's interceding and he's pleading for the city and he's pleading with the Lord. He's saying, it would be wrong if you destroyed righteous people with the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. If there are 50 righteous, would you destroy, still destroy the city? And the Lord said, if I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sake. And so this is a... Uh, this is God being very patient with Abraham and also Abraham being very bold. And what a what a righteous act from Abraham this is to intercede, to press into the presence of God, to pray and call out for mercy and grace on these people. But also on God's behalf, really laying it out to Abraham that he doesn't know everything about the situation or he's not realizing the truth of the situation and we can tell that now in verse 27 the prayer we're praying along with abraham is indeed now i am i who am but dust and ashes have taken it upon myself to speak to the lord and so we're focusing on this verse this prayer for us as we pray today behold we who are but dust and ashes have taken it upon ourselves to speak to the Lord. Every time that we pray, knowing that we are but dust and ashes, our, His ways are higher than our ways. And He knows better than we know. And so we humble ourselves and come to the Lord in prayer, knowing that we look through a glass darkly. We don't see the whole picture, but we trust in the goodness and the mercy and the grace of God. And so Abraham goes from 50 to 45 to 30 to 20, all the way down to 10, praying, will you not destroy Sodom and Gomorrah for the sake of 10 people? And the Lord says, I will not destroy it for the sake of 10. And he turned away as soon as he finished speaking with Abraham, and Abraham returned to his place. See, either Abraham didn't know or didn't realize the truth that God tells us. It's, it's in the Psalms, but it's also in Romans chapter 3, verse 10. No one is righteous, not even one. In all creation, in all the world, since the beginning of time, there's no one righteous, not one. 
We all have fallen short of the glory of God. All of us, like sheep, have been led astray. There is no one righteous, not one. And in fact, in Genesis chapter 15, verse 6, Abraham himself, it says, Abraham believed God, and it was accredited to him as righteousness. Not righteousness of his own, but righteousness God had imputed on Abraham because he believed in him. God was very patient with Abraham in this prayer. God was very patient and did not rebuke him for coming to him and praying these prayers. But Abraham was praying that if he could find 10 righteous people in the city, but there was not 10 righteous people in the city. There were not 10 righteous people in the earth, and there still aren't. None are righteous, not one. All of our righteousness must come from God. And so in that, we see clearly that all the salvation of God, all the mercy of God, all the grace of God is dependent on His love and His mercy and our trust in Him and our trust and our belief in that goodness and mercy of God. So as we pray, praying Genesis eighteen twenty seven, Lord, teach us to realize that we are but dust and ashes. And we've decided to come to the Most High God to pray and to lift up our voice, pleading for mercy, pleading for grace, but also trusting and believing in you. So let's pray. Father, we do come to you. We come boldly to the throne of grace, boldly in the blood of Jesus, in the power of the Holy Spirit, coming as Abraham did knowing that your ways are higher than our ways, trusting in your grace, trusting in your mercy. Let it be said of us as it was of Abraham, that we believed God and you accredited it to us as righteousness, not having any righteousness of our own, but holding fast and holding true, believing on you, our Lord and Savior Jesus, praying Genesis chapter 18, verse 27. And Abraham answered and said, Indeed now, I who am but dust and ashes have taken it upon myself to speak to the Lord. We give you praise, O God. We thank you that we can come boldly to your throne. We thank you that we can speak directly to you. We thank you that you have filled us to overflowing with your Holy Spirit who dwells within us. We thank you that we have communion with you, Father, and the Son, through the Holy Spirit, now and forever, giving you praise. We love you, Lord Jesus. We give you praise. Amen. I love you. Jesus loves you. Love one another. We'll see you again tomorrow. God bless.